So basically, it's not your projections. It's actually you make the retail or whatever if you do sell your product. Your actual sales are. Okay. Nice try. So we talk about an exit, right? An exit is an event where the company is truly deemed to be successful, and it happens in two ways. One is that the company goes public. That means people can buy shares in the company. Or the second way is it gets sold to another company and the company buys and therefore takes over the shares. Right? Till that point, that happens. You may have 200,000 shares in Bobbling, Bobble 10. Right? I might, I might have a company that's called MyCoolStartup.com and I might have shares in that, but you can't do anything to the shares. It's paper money. For it to become a real money, you have to have a successful startup. The key point here is, unless you have an exit event, the shares in your company are just pay for money. They mean nothing. So if you have to make a lot of money and you deem yourself to be like a millionaire, make sure you either sell the company or take it public. Right? So we'll talk about it a little bit coming up. Next, please. Okay, now th this is the one where, how do you incorporate? <coughs> so you still have another slide before that. No, no, just go to that one. Go to the, the video. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Beautiful screen. Today we are going to discuss how to start a company. If you want to set up a startup company, you should consider incorporating a Delaware C Corporation. How easy is it to incorporate in Delaware? A Delaware corporation can be set up in as little as one day. It also does not cost a great deal to incorporate. How many shares should we start with? Typically, you would start with 10 million shares of authorized capital, and you should consider issuing between 7 to 8 million shares initially to the founders. How many shares should be reserved for an option pool? You should consider setting aside between 15 to 20 percent of the initial share capital for an option pool. The company will need to set up its initial board of directors. One person can be the initial board. The company will also need to elect the initial officers. Once the company has been incorporated, the founder shares have been issued, and the officers and the board of directors has been elected, the company is ready to start operations. Thank you. That was great. It sounds fairly easy. Doesn't it? No. 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 Yeah. No way. Yes. How, many, how many people here, and be honest, um, are confused about incorporation, exit, all of those things? Or, or if you get it. Are you, are you confused or you get it? Okay, let me do the reverse. How many people get it? Okay. And this is good because it gives me an idea on how to progress the class. Remember what I told you guys? Week one and week two was a cakewalk. It was all about common sense. It was all about things that we understand in our mind. And I said week three onwards, it's going to start getting tough. Did I not warn you? So week three onwards, it's going to start getting tough because we are discussing key terms in a startup. Right? Remember, there is no substitute for hard work. Right? So I want you guys to lean on your parents, right? And ask them questions about things that you don't understand. Incorporation, exit, shares. I can guarantee you that every one of your parents, every one of them own shares in companies. They're owners in companies like Google, Apple, uh, you know, Yahoo. I can guarantee you that. Right? So ask them questions. <coughs> They can help you. Of course, I'm available. Send me, send me emails or I'll stay on after the class if you have questions. But it, it is a little tough. But you guys can tough it out, right? Yes? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Very good. Incorporation, simply put, is the act of making a company. Shares, simply put, is determines the ownership in the company. Exit, simply put, that you become a successful company. With me so far? Yeah. Yes. Okay, just remember those three things. Next, please. Okay, 
Um, I guess this is my favorite topic and a lot of yours too because when I asked you guys about the business plan, most of you talked about teams, right? Here's the, here's the thing, don't just believe me on it. Don't just believe me. If you go to any VC and you want to get funding, they look at the team. Remember that, that framework we said? They all look at the team. They will not invest if you go to them yourself and saying that, hey, listen, I have a great business plan. Here, take a look. They're going to say, go away. Right? And then if they look at your team and you say, I have a great business plan and I have a software developer and myself, who's a finance guy, what do they say? Go away. You don't have a full team. Because fundamentally, for you to be successful, they look at it saying that, do you have the cross-functional expertise that is needed to get a company from zero to started to successful? Teams make up that exact thing. You have to hire to fill your deficiencies. So if I'm a geek, a techie guy, then I'll hire a salesman, I'll hire a marketing guy, I'll hire a finance guy, right? So you have to you have to build your team to fill your own deficiencies. Very important point. Build a complete team, uh, and then make sure that you don't step on their toes, right? I'm a finance guy, but I go to a software developer and say, hey, your code is not doing this, your code is not doing that. It won't work, right? Let the team do their job. Remember what we discussed in week two? If you lift the team, you if you lift your team, you lift yourself. Right? You lift everybody. You lift the team, you lift everybody around you, and what happens? You lift yourself. Very important to remember. All right, next please. A little bit more on teams. Last video for the day. My name is Christine Wheeler, and I'm founder of Jazzle Foods. You know, I think, you know, it evolves over time. I mean, first of all, I knew I couldn't do this by myself. So, you know, I had the idea, and I got pretty well started on it, but then I had to look for people. And that's, it took a, quite a while to find people that were in this industry that then I had to convince them to believe in this idea and basically work for free or work for equity. And, and that's the thing that you realize, and you know, that's a challenge, is finding the right team. But when you do, it's great because as every entrepreneur will face, there's lots of hurdles. And it's not until you're in that hurdle that you realize how good your team is. And, um, you know, we've had a lot of, of our own hurdles, and I realized, wow, this team is very committed. They believe in this idea. Yeah. But you know, it takes the effort of the team you know, to really um, bring this all together. And I, mean, I don't think any one person can do it all alone, at least something as big as what we're trying to accomplish, especially with the big competitors out there. So we, we found a team that has a really good experience, and um, we're just making it work. All right. There's a, there's a whole series, the Kaufman series, if you want to go Google it or YouTube it. And you find uh, there are folks who talk about what made them succeed as entrepreneurs. So if you, if you so like, uh, you can go and again, go and look for it again. This one will be in the slide set that I'll post up. Okay, we talked about this. So this is a reiteration. There are two important ways by which you can be successful, and in essence, convert your paper money to real money. You can take it to the bank, and then you can buy your new shiny car, or the home, or, or the vacation to Hawaii. Before that, it's all paper money. And it's either an IPO, which is you go public, which is you take what you have available as shares and offer it to the public, because the public then can buy the shares, and in essence, it creates what we call a liquidity event. I won't talk about that. Or you get acquired, or you merge with another company, and in essence, it shows that that your shares are not converted to real money because acquiring company will pay you for those shares. So those are the two big ways. Next, please. Okay, um, I have a bunch of these. And it was really fun. Uh, so how uh, Instagram got started, how Pinterest got started, how um, I believe Mary and me got started, how Angry Birds got started. I'm not gonna walk you through it, it's in the slides. Take a look. But the important thing here is that none of them, none of them, have a few things that happened for them. One, the original idea that they had at the beginning, when they started off, is not, repeat, not, 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 
The ones that they ended up taking success to success. Not the ones that they success. Exactly. So don't don't be disheartened. When you start something up, it's just a building block. It's a starting point. It's it's how you take that and iterate on it. And what we call in the Silicon Valley, I should put that up in the lingo as well, pivot. Pivot is a huge Silicon Valley word. Pivot is when you take the fundamental idea and you do something else, which is similar, but not necessarily the same. Right? It's a pivot. So so all of these guys in those made, made, made that pivot. That's one big thing. Uh, second one is, none of these guys were at a point where they were ready to fold shop. Right? None of these guys were not at a point where they were ready to fold up and say, I'm done, this is too hard, I'm not going to be able to do it, and no one's going to buy my product, you know, no one's going to fund me, I'm just done, I'm just going to go back and play soccer, or I'm going to go back to grade 8 and, and start studying. No, I'm not saying, suggesting you leave school, guys. Right? So you stay in school, but, but, but you know what I mean, right? Not one of them, not one of them were at the point where that did not happen. It happened to me as well. Right? I, I went through many, many, uh, I went through nearly a year, didn't have a penny in salary, right? And, and we thought we were going to give up, but we got bought, my, my startup, right? So this happens to everybody. And, and in this case, uh, uh, Angry Birds is a great story. You can read about it next piece. Okay, uh, so here is another fun exercise for you guys, which is, uh, which is a collection of what we have read, heard, talked about in the first four weeks, which is how to succeed in the startup. So Looks like you, already, already, you guys are already developing your favorites. That's the exercise. I'm going to come around, pick which one is your favorite and talk about it, okay? I'm going to start from the back rows. Pick any one and talk about it, and that basically is a mantra for success in startups. This is a pretty pivotal article in the startup ecosystem. Okay, back, back most pro. Hands please. I'm going to go to the parents. Okay, moving backwards. Okay, you guys are getting up. Don't die. Don't die. The, the, the aspect of persevere. Always give your fullest. Anybody in this room? Okay, next row. I have a lot of participants in this row. Nice, I like it. Pick good co-founders. It's a good way to bounce off your ideas. The strengths of teams. Avoid distractions. Don't avoid distractions. And a very good point also is there's a, there's, this is another thing I should have put up in that lingo slide, which is time to market. Right? Time to market is very important because if you don't get the product out at the right time, guess what, the competition may bring it up or you may not have something viable at that point.